In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of solving a pretty complicated combustion analysis problem. In this problem, our hydrocarbon contains not only carbon and hydrogen atoms, but also oxygen atoms. And having to deal with the oxygen atoms in our hydrocarbon means that we're going to have several added steps to the problem solving process. This should not be the first combustion analysis problem that you try. Uh, if you have not solved any simple combustion analysis problems, I encourage you to go back to the previous video and look at that example first before attempting to follow along with this problem because it's relatively tricky. So let's just start by writing, like we did last time, writing a generic combustion equation for some sort of unknown hydrocarbon, we're going to call it CxHyOz, because we know that we have oxygen atoms in our hydrocarbon. CxHyOz reacting with oxygen gas to produce CO2 and H2O. And I like to have this written out just because it kind of gives me um, sort of a visual of what we're working with. And we know that this reaction produced 0.3664 grams of CO2 and also that it produced 0 0.1500 grams of H2O. So those are just numbers that I'm taking out of the problem. And also that we know we have point or had 0 0.2500 grams of our hydrocarbon. If you did the previous video with me, you know that this particular piece of information was not used in the simple combustion analysis problem, but it is gonna be needed in this problem. We also have an extra piece of information. We know that the molecular weight of our hydrocarbon is 90 grams per mole. This problem is uh, not only different in the sense that we are dealing with oxygen, but also this problem is asking us to determine the molecular formula, not the empirical formula. So this molecular weight is gonna be useful for that part of the problem. So even though this is more complicated, our first initial steps are gonna be the same as they were in the last problem. We're gonna start by determining how much carbon we have in our CO2 and also in our hydrocarbon. So we're gonna take our mass of CO2, and we are going to convert that into moles of CO2 using the molecular weight of CO2, 44 grams per mole. And then we're going to convert that into grams of carbon, or excuse me, moles of carbon. And like I said, I am assuming that you've already solved simple combustion analysis problems before. So I'm not really taking the time to explain why we're doing these steps. If you are really lost right now, um, just go back to the previous video where this strategy is explained. Um, and so you can understand what's going on. So let's get the calculator out and let's um, solve for the moles of carbon, 0.3664 divided by 44 grams per mole. We have 0.008327 moles of carbon. And now we're going to do the same thing for our hydrogen. We have 0 0.1500 grams of H2O. We want to convert that into moles of H2O. One mole of H2O is 18 grams of H2O. And then we wanna convert that into moles of hydrogen. Two moles of hydrogen, one mole of H2O. And again, this, this particular part of the problem solving process is explained in the previous video. So let's do the math on this, 0.15 divided by 18 times, not five, times two, gives us point, gives us 0 0.01667 moles of hydrogen. Now, in the previous, in the simpler problem, we were pretty much done at this point. We had figured out how many moles of carbon we have, which is our X, and we'd figured out how many moles of hydrogen we have, which is our Y. In this video, we're not done because we also have to figure out how many moles of oxygen we have. That's one of the components here. And none, neither one of these values are helpful in determining the moles of oxygen because even though we do have moles of oxygen in CO2 and we have moles 
levels of oxygen in H2O, some of the oxygen on the right side of the equation is coming from our hydrocarbon and some of it is coming from the O2. And we don't know how much is coming from O2 and how much is coming from our hydrocarbon. So in terms of calculating the moles of H, uh, excuse me, in calculating the moles of oxygen, we can't use this information and we also can't do anything like what we've done here in this step. What we need to do is use the mass of our hydrocarbon. So we're going to say we know that we have a sample that is 0 0.2500 grams. That's the mass of our hydrocarbon. And that 0 0.2500 grams is the mass of our carbon atoms and the mass of our hydrogen atoms and the mass of our oxygen atoms all together. So we know that the 0 0.2500 is just the sum of the masses of all of the, har har of the hydrocarbons components. We have figured out how many moles of carbon we have, and we have figured out how many moles of hydrogen we have. So if we convert these moles into grams, we will know this number and we will know this number as well, and this will be our only unknown. So what we have to do at this time, and these are the extra steps, what we have to do is figure out how many grams of carbon we have using the moles of carbon and figure out how many grams we have using the moles of hydrogen. So that's what's going to come next. So over here, we're going to say for every one mole of carbon, there are 12 grams. And that is just the, the weight, um, the atomic weight of carbon, 0.008327 times 12. So that is 0.99924 grams of carbon. And I'm going to copy that also down here. Our total sample is 0 0.099924 grams of carbon. Plus, now we're going to do the same thing, figure out how much hydrogen we have. The hydrogen weight is about one, but I'm just going to do the steps here anyway. So one gram of hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen, that is 0 0.01667 grams of hydrogen. And I'm going to copy that down here as well. 0 0.0 one six six seven grams of hydrogen and now we are ready to figure out how much oxygen we have so we're going to take our total mass 0 0.2500 subtract the mass of the carbon atoms and subtract the mass of the hydrogen atoms and we are left with 0 0.133406 grams of oxygen. So this is the only way that we can figure out how much oxygen we have in our, in our hydrocarbon right here. Now, uh, what we need to do now is go back to remembering the purpose of this, trying to calculate the molecular formula, which requires a mole-to-mole-to-mole -to -mole -to -mole ratio. So we have to take this gram of hydrocarbon, gram of oxygen, and convert that into moles. One mole of oxygen is 16 grams. That's the atomic mass of oxygen. Oops, I did the wrong number there. 0.1334 divided by 16 is we have 0 0.0083375 moles of oxygen. There's a lot of numbers on this. So let's, um, let's take a look at what's important. We have our moles of carbon. We have our moles of hydrogen and we have our moles of oxygen. And I'm gonna highlight some stuff. So all of this stuff right here, and this stuff right here, and this step, these are no longer important. So we're just gonna kind of ignore them for now. All of that stuff that I just highlighted were the steps that we had to take to figure out how much oxygen we had. And now that we have that amount, we don't need to pay any attention to this stuff anymore. We just kind of are go going to kind of ignore it. So we have determined that our empirical formula is C.008 blah 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 H 
0.08, etc. And remember, we don't like to leave them in this particular format. We're going to turn them into nice whole numbers. So we're going to look at these three in the boxes, find the smallest number. It looks like this is the smallest number, even though carbon and oxygen are very close. And we're going to divide all of our ratios by this number. So everything is going to get divided by 0 0.008327. So now what we're doing is returning back to the same types of steps that we took in a simple combustion analysis problem. If you're feeling really overwhelmed right now, you know, that's pretty normal. Combustion analysis calculations are, for most general chemistry students, definitely one of the hardest things that we deal with. So when we do these calculations right here, I'm just going to kind of squeeze these numbers, we end up with one mole of carbon. This is going to work out to two two moles of hydrogen, so 0 0.016 divided by 0 0.008 is going to be two, and this is going to be one as well. Go ahead and double check that on your um, calculators if you want. And just to try to keep things easy to find, I'll circle those numbers to make them easier to find. So what we just have done right there is calculated the empirical formula. The empirical formula is C H2O. This problem wants us to calculate the molecular formula, not the empirical formula. And this is where we need to use the molecular weight, 90 grams per mole. Now we've done this type of calculation before, but not for a while, so we're going to want to do a little bit of a refresher on it. One of the steps that we can take in going from a, a empirical formula into a molecular formula is to figure out the molecular weight of the empirical formula and compare that to the actual molecular weight provided to us. So for CH2O, that's going to be 12 plus 2 plus 16. That's going to be 30, 30 grams per mole. And when we compare the molecular weight of the empirical formula to the actual molecular weight, we can see that the empirical formula is a third of the actual molecular weight, so 30 versus 90, which means that we need to multiply everything by 3. Our empirical formula is just a third of what it should be. So the molecular formula is going to be three times the empirical formula, C3H6O3. And if we want to double check, just to make sure we did it right, we can calculate the molecular weight of this guy over here. 3 times 12 plus 6 for the uh, hydrogens plus um, 32 plus 16 is 48, 90 grams per mole. So like I said, for most general chemistry students, this represents possibly the hardest thing that we do um, not just in the first part of general chemistry, but all of gener general chemistry altogether. So I recommend you uh, find more problems like this, practice more problems like this, and don't get too frustrated with yourself if it's difficult because it's very normal for it to be difficult.